This is Benjamin Bass from Insider Travel Report. Privileged to be sitting across uh, Peter McCann, general manager of the Marion Hotel, one of the finest high-profile five-star luxury hotels in Dublin, certainly if not in all of the country of Ireland. Well, thank you so much. So uh, we just took a fabulous tour of the facility. So I thought it would be beneficial to begin with, can you give us a little bit of the history of the Marion as well as its evolution in terms of how did it become the hotel that it is today? So historically, the four houses are, are of substantial significance in the evolution of, of Ireland itself. But we, the current owners bought them in uh, the early 90s with a view to developing a hotel. So. Prior to that, they sat as government offices for 90 years, 80 years, and they were fairly derelict when we got them. Before that, they housed most of the aristocracy and the decision makers in Irish society for the previous 150 years. And perhaps the most important and significant person who lived in any of those houses lived in this particular house where we sit now, number 24, as the Duke of Wellington. He was the first son of Arthur Wellesley, who was the professor of music at Trinity College just down the street. Um, Needless to say, the Duke of Wellington was famous for, for winning the Battle of Waterloo. And we joke here that if he hadn't, we might all be speaking French today, but uh, we're not. Um, we took over in 92. The owners bought it, three Irish individuals bought it in 92. We sat on it for a couple of years and then we started the renovations and we opened in 97. The houses were stripped, in some cases, from basement to ceiling. You could see the sky. That's how in poor condition they were but they were put back together by a team of fantastic workmen all Irish uh, and we started to create and develop the hotel um, it's privately owned Irish owned uh, very much an Irish hotel with a, I believe a good sense of place which is as the world becomes more and more homogenized a sense of place I think is really important and it gets harder and harder to find so the hotel itself now comprises of 143 rooms, including 20 suites. We have two restaurants, two bars, a spa, and the unique selling points are the unique, the things that make this property unique. Firstly, it's built around a half an acre of private gardens. Mm. So it automatically sets a tone or a, a tranquility or a sense of calm. Um, the, the, the houses were houses and we still call them houses. Um, are furnished as if they'd been occupied by people over the intervening generation. So there's no one style of furniture here. We have Georgian, we have Edwardian, we have Victorian, everything that, uh, that, that would have gathered in a house, so to speak. That in itself sets a tone that it's not the uh, frenetic foyer of an international hotel. You're, in, it's, you're coming into somebody's house. Um, we, have, we are blessed with one of the finest art collections in the country. Some critics considered second only to the national collection in its importance, not mm -hmm. its size. Um, there are stunning paintings here that are privately owned by one of the owners of the hotel. We have a two-star Michelin restaurant, which we've had. Patrick Gibo was the first ever to have two stars in Ireland. He moved in with us um, when we opened, and it has been a huge success, the relationship between the two companies. Um, the cellar bar, which is down in the basement, is very, very popular locally. Um, it's a really nice bar to eat or drink in. So we, we were just beginning to learn about this uh, spa, which I believe has been a relatively recent renovation. Uh, it's formerly where the restaurant was, in, unless I'm mistaken. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about the general uh, health and wellness center uh, that you have? Yeah, so originally when we opened, we did have a spa, but um, the spa world hadn't expanded to the extent that it had, to where it is nowadays. So we recognized that we needed a first opportunity to develop a proper spa. Mm -hmm. We had to find space. One of the biggest challenges in a property like this is space. We were developing private suites on the other side of the garden and had a, a eureka moment when we realized we could build a new garden room restaurant, which would open out into the garden, seat over 100 people, and it, it became a huge success in its own right. What that allowed us to do was free up the old restaurant, which was in the basement, the cellar restaurant, which never really worked because underground dining is underground dining. Mm -hmm. um, but it gave us an opportunity to develop a state-of-the-art spa, which we've done, and we're thrilled with it. It has worked extremely well. We have six treatment rooms. Um, we feature Biologie Recherche, the 
French um, product line, which is enormously popular. Um, and there's only one or two properties in Ireland have access to it. Um, that and the we use the spa product as well, which is you might call the day to day, the primary one. Um, the range of treatments are fairly standard uh, in terms of. Uh, the type of massage and whatnot you can have, but where it gets more technical is in that field of the the, the biology you research, which as a man is way beyond my comprehension. Uh-huh. 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 So thank you for that. We've just covered a, a tremendous amount of ground uh, regarding uh, renovations, uh, the art collection, the dining experience, the spa, and so I just want to get a little bit more nitty gritty uh, about some of those things. So um, let's go back to art for a moment. You have a a world-class collection, and I'm just curious if you can tell us a little bit more about um, the curation process, how they're chosen, um, are they rotated in and out, and how the art collection that the Marion hosts elevates the guests' experience here at the hotel. Good question. The, The collection is privately owned by one of our owners with one or two other paintings from the other owners. Um, It represents a broad swathe of what's the best of Irish art over the last two or three generations. We also feature feature some early Dutch uh, work as well, but it's primarily Irish. Um, How is it curated? It's curated by one man who has exquisite taste. That's the truth. Um, I'm very much a Philistine when I started here about art, as I've proved many times over the years. But I've grown to love the paintings here and there's there's no bad painting. There's no painting you look at and say, that doesn't that isn't stunning. That isn't that doesn't they all draw you in for different reasons, whether it's uh, there's a Belgian artist that uh, our owner bought recently for the garden room, um uh, La Casse, which is beautiful and it's completely at odds with the rest of the collection. But stunning in its example of its work and i think that's probably what drives them they're the best examples of what they are in each of their subclasses for want of a better word Um, and to to finish your question the guests the feedback from guests about the quality of the art is enormous Um, anybody who knows anything about it or appreciates the finer things in life instantly identify that this collection is very serious and that in itself contributes to the I don't know, the sense of enjoyment, the sense of well-being, the sense of something special about the hotel. Uh, And I've no doubt it it contributes hugely to it. It's allowed us to develop food products on the back of it. We've taken those products to New York and to London in the form of the Art Afternoon Tea, which is now an institution after 20 years in Dublin. And we simply invite the chefs to interpret some of the paintings through the food. Um, And it's hugely successful. Um, So, yeah, the the art collection is a big part of uh, this experience. And I believe, unless I'm mistaken, that fairly recently there's been an endeavor uh, to create a competition to give other artists the opportunity to have their work yeah. uh, added to the collection for two years. Is that correct? Yeah. So um, our brand director came up with the idea of the Marion Plinth, which is a biannual award whereby we invite local artists in the visual space to uh, submit um, ideas for the competition and we have a panel of the owner who's the art collector we have the um, chairman or the sorry the chief executive of the Royal Hibernian Academy Crossroad and Una Murray who runs an art gallery in town and they're the judges and we had 90 odd uh, submissions this year wow. and after the, the the weaning process by the judges uh, Susan Mannion won and her piece is hanging in the space that's allocated for that painting it will hang there for two years and we have the option of buying it and adding it to the collection um, we bought uh, Orla Whelan's piece off her and she won the first one. So it sits on, it's on one of the corridors at the, in its own dedicated lift space. Um, and it's, we've always been patrons of the art uh, since we opened because the art collection is such an intrinsic part of what we do. But it's not limited to the visual arts. We've moved into music. Mm-hmm. We've done a lot of work with opera. We, we've done a lot of work with Wexford uh, Opera Festival, which is considered one of the best in the world. We've hosted full operas in the garden. We had, for several years, we did a series of we, we ran corporate operas in the garden we now do drawing room operas uh, in the salons in this house which 
the professor of music who was the father of the Duke of Wellington used to host yeah. in the 1750s. We're now doing it again. Uh, and then the guests go to dinner in the garden room. Um, and we support the uh, Royal Irish Academy of Music at the bottom of the street. We There's loads of different ways in the visual arts and in the musical arts and in drama we support and are involved. Um, because Dublin has such a rich, and our Ireland has such a rich and vibrant history of, of the arts. It, it was just a natural for us to be involved in. It's so wonderful um, that a facility and business of such uh, clout and prestige is so interested in giving back to the, the arts. I also know that the Marion is interested in some sustainable green practices. Uh, could you bring us into some of that? Yeah. So in the last, you know, post COVID, we've all had to rethink the world and rethink how we live. Um, we have we had been steadily improving our sustainability. Uh, and over the last couple of years, we've changed our entire lighting system to LED. We've changed our water systems, our filtration systems. Uh, we've just as recently as two days ago signed a deal for uh, wind energy that is only sourced from wind farms. Um, we have ha we've been buying 100% renewable energy for the last four or five years certified and now we're moving into just the space of buying only wind uh, generated energy um, at a more local level we've engaged we've employed a, um, a sustainability manager who is really really good and we're now starting to move into the area of dealing with the suppliers and pushing back on plastics pushing back on packaging and trying to find channels where we can get direct line of food to us so we're in negotiation and conversations with farmers about polytunnels on land that we might own or we might co-invest in and they become our suppliers and we cut out all the, the, the transport and the middle stuff. I, I'm grateful that you just brought up food because one of the things that I was curious about was uh, the experience of the culture of cuisine here is world class and yet um, it seems incredibly reflective of the Irish experience. What was it like finding that balance between a high tier of professional cuisine and um, staying true and reflective of a culture? Uh, well, it's funny. I, th I think our, our food culture has evolved in the last 20 years in this country uh, at a magnificent pace and in a magnificent direction. Irish food 20 years ago was, you might say it was grand, it was fine. But now we realize as an industry, we are sitting on a gold mine. Uh -huh. The quality of the natural produce in this country is second to none. And it was a whole lot of different organizations. One that we're involved in, Good Food Ireland, which is at it the longest, I think. Uh, we got involved about 20 years ago with them. And it, it was designed to encourage artisan farmers, artisan producers to create food products from from the natural ingredients we have in the country, which are stunning. So now our cheeses, for example, compete with the French comfortably with anybody in the world, I believe. Our meats, are, our primary proteins are superb in their quality. They're sought after the world over. But we also have a, a, um, a generation of chefs who want to drive this quality, this quality produce and use it. So the link between the chef, like our, our exec chef here, Ed Cooney, and the land is relatively close. And we deal directly with all these people. And our conversations with them is how they're developing their product to suit us. It's not, it's no longer going to a market and buying stuff. You're having relationships with the people who make them. We've had management days where we've been on uh, cheese making farms. We've been on um, fish smoking expeditions to see how these people do it and what what can we do together uh, in a sustainable and prolonged fashion? And I, it's a fascinating journey. It really is. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, just as we're coming to the conclusion of our, our time together, uh, I think a good thing to potentially end on is what do you think, given all of the wonderful um, and clearly nuanced and intentional and well thought experiences that uh, the Marion provides, seemingly with such ease, what do you think uh, is the takeaway that most guests experience after their stay here? Um, the first image that comes to mind when you describe that is a duck crossing a pond. Uh -huh. It looks calm on the top. <laughs> it's going like hell underneath. Um, what do the guests take away? I, I, I think what I really love about this hotel, and I can say this objectively, is the people who work in it. I passionately believe that they are the hotel. They are the experience that the guest has. At the end of the day, a hotel to me is about making people feel good about themselves through what the people in the hotel do. 
And I think we have a magnificent, and I know this, you know, everyone's got to say this, but I really believe this. I think we have wonderful people working here who make the guests feel so welcome. And I see it in the return figures. Mm-hmm. You know, the amount of people who come back here year after year after year because Patrick's here, because Tony's here, because Liam's here. It's massive, really massive. And yes, we have all the benefits of the art collections and the food and all that. But at the core of it, you have a, you have a group of people who want to do it, who want to make people feel good about themselves, who want to serve and who want to look after people. And they in turn enjoy it themselves. So uh, I, I think that's hopefully what guests get out of here or take from here. It's certainly what we've experienced. Not only are we conducting this interview now, but I'm currently staying at the Marion. And the moment we walked in, I think my partner and I were both um, shocked is, is too grandiose a word, but really taken aback at how welcome and special we felt as strangers walking into a building. It, it really is is clear from every level of the establishment. Well, that's what it is. So congratulations there. And I think last thing that we'll address is uh, the different guests, the different type of guests that are interested in coming. How does the Marion cater to uh, a family, for instance, coming for a holiday and uh, traveling business folk who are here for more of a, a corporate reason? Uh, well, the family one, we've been family friendly since the day we opened. Uh, not only in the configuration of bedrooms, but in the range of services we offer to children. Um, The swimming pool is always a great attraction for kids. (laughs) Um, But again, it goes back to, and this is feedback from guests. This isn't us inventing stuff. They talk about how we make the children feel welcome. And at the end of the day, everybody's a guest, whether they're four or 44, whether they're running a multinational corporation or they've saved up to come here. They're all guests. Uh, Whether they're A-listers from Hollywood or they're rock stars or they're royalty, they're all guests. And I hope we treat everybody the same because we should. And I think that's the secret. It's not a secret, that's the solution. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time. It's been an absolute privilege speaking with you. Uh, Once again, this is the Marion Hotel in Dublin. Please, please check it out. It's certainly one of the finest hotels that we've ever been to uh, in our lives. So thank you so much. Once again, this is Benjamin Bass from Insider Travel Report. Goodbye.